Hello my friends, my name is Kyle and today we're going to be talking about what is karma. Because as we talked about in previous lectures, karma is the way that you act and react to the world. And you can change the way you act and react by changing your perception on things, by not being so attached to fruitive results or uh, specifically things that happen to you. Now, karma is caused by attachment or desire, which is typically called kama, K-A-M-A, -A, versus karma, which is K-A-R-M-A. -A. Now, kama you might be familiar with from the phrase Kama Sutra, which is the uh, Indian text of multiple uh, sex positions. Now, um, kama is basically desire or lust, and sutra comes from the uh, Sanskrit word sutra, as well, m much older, uh, which means to sew together. So basically, Kama Sutra means the uh, sewing together of lust. Uh, and in other religious texts, you typically hear Sutra get tossed around between Jainism, Hinduism, Buddhism. So it's a fairly common uh, word that you will hear within uh, religious texts. Now, karma kind of works in this very interesting way because not only how you react, affects the world, but how other people react affects it, because people exist within themselves and outside of themselves. That's why you have an inside and an outside, because the concept of humanity is basically just this small layer of feeling around a bunch of different cells uh, that have very similar uh, genetic structure or uh, purpose. So karma works kind of like this rope now I know this is a bandana, but it's tied around your wrist like this, and it's done infinitely towards all the other people. So there would be this wrist wrapped around someone else. And your first reaction when you're in a snare like this is to pull your arm back. But when you have a rope wrapped around you and everyone else, if you pull your wrist back, what it's going to do is instantly tighten up the bottom part here. So it's going to make it harder on you, but then it's also going to make it more taunt on everyone else, which is going to make their existence more complicated, which is why everything you do affects other people. Your emotions are a boomerang. You won't get rid of your temper by losing it. So only when you realize that, hey, I'm stuck in a trap like this, and your first reaction is always to, you know, jump back, do something, and you take a second, you look, and you say, hey, well, we're kind of bound like this. If I just rotate my wrist this way with the rope, I can pull it out. So that's the way to get out of karma, or bad karma, is to realize that the way you react will pan out for everyone else. But the thing is, if you're just acting freely of the results and you can just say, okay, whatever happens, good or bad, I'll let it you know, pan out for me, is one way to go about it. However, in the Buddhist religion, they have this concept of the bodhisattva, which is this um, self-realized Buddha. And those individuals, instead of just disappearing off into nirvana, which is, you know, bliss, the thing you're desiring to achieve, it's liberation from this material world, they realize that they can't actually be liberated until everyone else is, because you are everyone, as we had discussed in the video I Am You. Because we are just the universe experiencing itself, playing with all of these false egos and all of these body costumes pretending to be individuals. But we're actually just one giant unit with so much power and so much love for ourselves that we've decided that we're going to become all that there is. And we've lost ourselves in this you know, sense of humanity. Uh, now there's lots of different reasons. The uh, Hindus like to point to this as being the age of Kali Yuga, which basically means that everything is driven by Kama, K-A-M-A, -A, the lust and desire or selfless action. Uh, there's also things the Native Americans and Aboriginals uh, didn't believe in property, and by believing in property, this kind of perpetuates this idea of lust. So by having uh, things that you own, things that are yours, uh, instead of just having everything as a collective, it's made the world more complicated. As a side note, in the Aborigines here in Australia, their native language, before people came to them in the 1700s from England, they didn't have a concept of the word thank you because everything was collective property and they just shared it with each other. 
and there was no thank you, may I please, because you you don't exist. I I don't exist. We are just this great phantasmagoria playing out through all of these different perspectives to entertain ourselves, to show ourselves that we're once again who we are. And we have to go through situations like this to come back home. So it's not to necessarily bash large corporations, or it's not meant to bash wanting things, because you want to do that. That's the name of the game that exists right now. But the thing is, when people typically realize that this is what's happening, they drop out of society. They create conscious villages similar to the uh, ISKCON village that I'm at right now where they're saying I don't want to play in the rat race of working a nine-to-five job of you know trying to get possessions to better myself compared to other people I just want to love and be loved because that's all humanity is meant to do and now there's similar other people that I believe that are very successful in business that understand this and kind of peddle spirituality as a uh, way to make money similar to the people who uh sell crystals, not small individuals, but large suppliers from uh, the ground. Uh, Now, this is just my personal belief. Please, if that is you and that is your role in life, if you're doing this consciously with the intention of actually helping people, by no means am I talking about you. And you know what? If those people don't exist, that's even better, and it's just shame on me for believing that the system exists. But if you want to get free of the negative results, you need to realize that since you are this universe and we as people don't exist, the best thing that you can do is continue going on the path that you are because as we talked about before, what you should be doing with your life is whatever's appropriate with the situation you're in. You should not be going out of your way to cause unnecessary harm or trauma to other individuals. So then with this, You should just give what you have, what you do, to the rest of the world. Don't expect things to come back because you're everyone. It's already yours. And the concept of gain and loss is just this construct that we've made to play this game of forgetting that we're everything. Thank you for watching. I love you.